Verse 1, the Bible says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. There is not a Leon Schuster's a movie, did he? Uh, then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. Somebody say dry. dry. There's no need dry, dry, take it dry, nee? They were very dry. Hulle was droog gewees, lewe loos, dood. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, you know. And he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You're going to receive the word of the Lord this week. And the word of God is going to be fueled by the breath of God. And God is going to set things right in your life. And God's going to reignite you. Welcome also to Kimberley, Bloemfontein, all the other churches with us this morning. Let's give them a hand clap. Come on. It says, thus says the Lord, surely I will cause breath to enter you. And you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And I suddenly, somebody say suddenly, come on. You're going to get it suddenly in one of the sessions. I don't know when it is, whether it's the morning or the evening. God has a suddenly for you. A sudden breakthrough, a sudden deliverance, a sudden explosion, a sudden idea. Because we serve a God of suddenlies. We serve a God that is alive. Amen. Hall oh, come on, church. Hallelujah. And the bones came together. Things are going to come together in your life, bone to bone. And then as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. And say to the breath, thus says the Lord. We have to say what God says if we want to see what God wants us to see. We cannot say what the naysayers say. And we cannot speak what we see. I'm not talking about flaky prophecy. I'm talking about exactly what I taught you about in dialoguing and diarizing your conversation with God. And then declaring the promise that God gave you by the power of the Holy Ghost. He says, say what God says. Don't say what somebody else says you have to say. You say what God tells you about your child, about your marriage, about your business, about your future, about your emotions. You say what God says. You get rid of your cynicism, your doubt, your anger, your resentment, your, your bitterness. And you begin to put God's word in your mouth. You begin to prophesy to your future. It says, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And breath came into my business, uh, into them. And they lived. And stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Listen, when God does something, it may start small, but it's not going to stay small. The Bible says, despise not, oh, I don't want to preach this morning, but I'll tell you. The Bible says, despise not the day of small beginnings, but when God is something, it's not going to stay small. God's going to bless you super abundantly. God's going to exalt you. God's going to promote you. God's going to expand you to the left and the right. And almost, I gave away next year's uh, title for 2024. Okay, it's got something to do with in the Bible that God's prepared us for supernatural acceleration into shout it expansion no I didn't say that that's what he says actually I was sitting and praying yesterday and, and the media team has been on top of me and say we need the theme for next year we need the theme for next year and they bombard me with all these uh, suggestions and I, and I said no 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 I, I'm not going to say what you want me to say when the right when God drops it in my spirit, as I was praying yesterday, preparing, suddenly God drops this in my spirit. And it's just like a kaboom on the inside. I know this is what God says for 2024, and I'll announce it next week, uh, Friday morning. I'm going to announce the theme for the new year. And it sounds like... Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> well, if you were in the spirit, you would get it. It's like... Mm, mm, mm.
I tell you what, Jesus can't keep a secret. I mean, a God secret. And I'm struggling. That's why the Bible says, uh, nobody knows the hour of the not even Jesus. Because if Jesus knew, he was going to tell you when he comes back. So you'll be ready. But not even Jesus knows when the Father says, now you go back. So I feel a little, I'm not Jesus. Okay, make it very clear. But I feel like I want to tell you. Do you want to hear? Okay. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet. God's going to pick you up. He is the glory and the lifter of your head. It doesn't matter what knocked you down. God's going to put new life and new breath in you and new fire and new energy and new faith and new hope. And you are going to get back on your feet and you are going to be stronger than ever. Say amen. He said, son of man, these are the bones of the holy house of Israel. Indeed, they say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Now the land of Israel is the land of promise. That's applicable to us today as well as Christians. Then you shall know that I'm the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves, whatever that represents. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. Hey, God never said you will survive. There are too many of you that are in a survival mode because of things that have happened in your life. Listen, I'm not hyping you. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, you have to get ready for the breath of God to come this week, for the wind of God to come to pick you back up on your feet, to pick you back up emotionally, to pick you back up in your faith and to affirm His Word to you so that you can run and get busy with what God called you to do. When God's breath enters your life, you will not stay in the same place. You will not stay in a place of cynicism, etc. So let's break this down very quickly because this is real. The hand of God takes Ezekiel and Ezekiel finds himself in a valley full of dry bones. All around him there's death, there's division, there's dirt, there's drought. It sounds a little bit like South Africa's economy. So that's why we better stop saying what everybody says about South Africa. And we better get the word of the Lord intercessors in our mouth and prophesy and pray to the future of South Africa. We will bring life to the valley by the breath of God. Come on, there's a future. You may be standing in a dry valley this morning. I don't know. You may be in a valley of dry emotions, a valley of sickness and disease, a dry marriage. You may be standing in a dry business situation. You may be like Israel and you feel your hope is lost, but God says hope is not lost. God says you have a future and a hope. God says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. So God brings him and he puts him in a valley and he's surrounded by all the bones. And each one of those bones can represent something else. Let's talk about the challenges in South Africa. Maybe it's your personal world. Maybe it's the world we face. The challenges in our world. Education. Things your child is struggling with. Things you are struggling with. Things you are dealing with that nobody else knows about. Your finances after COVID has been in a lockdown. The problem with that is that people become neutral. And in that valley, when they are surrounded by death, by dearth, by drought, by division, they lose hope. The whole nation has lost hope at this point. And the interesting thing is not God asks them what caused the bones to be dry. So stop looking for an answer and begin to look to your future. Stop nursing and cursing and rehearsing your setbacks and your pain and your misery and your past and begin to, begin to meditate on God's Word and begin to speak the Word of the Lord. Speak to your future in Jesus' name. Come on. It's not, brought you, it's not what brought you to where you are. It's who's going to take you from where you are into the land of promise. So God asks him a question. Listen, and we all have to answer this question because faith cannot work in a place of cynicism, cannot work in a place of negativity cannot work in a place of neutrality. So God brings him and he sets him in the valley. And in the natural, it's dry. It's hopeless. Your business, your womb, whatever it is, I don't know. 
But I want to tell you that God is still a miracle worker. I don't care what people say. Of course, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to tell you that God is still a God of the impossible. I want to tell you that God is still a way maker and a promise keeper. I'm not going to allow people to make a, an historical figure. No, our God is real. Our God is alive. The grave is empty. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works within you.